So we got a 1950s portable Zenith uh, AC DC battery. It's got the volume on one side, tuning on the other side. See the numbers there. It's got some brown spots on the front. Not quite sure if they're just stickers. Yeah, they're just stickers. I have no idea why they're there. It's got a few dents, a little bit of paint missing here and there. Let's see the dents that way. Let's see if we can maybe unbend some of them a little bit. This one up here looks pretty bad. Uh, this shouldn't be hard to just touch up a little bit of that paint. The handle uh, is broken here. Someone wrapped electrical tape around it. Just like this side, the the um, metal ring slides back and forth so the handle can collapse. But on this side, it's chopped up at the end because of the electrical tape. So maybe we'll take that off and see what we can do. Inside. These are open the same way pretty much, by the way. The back folds down. We have a model number. B400Y. You know, 117 ACDC. And those are your batteries to use. 15 watts. Our little DC tubes up here. Probably one and three, well actually you can see from the chart. Um, three one volt tubes and one three volt tube which will be a center attached filament so it can run off of one volt from the batteries unless these are series string I don't have the service information for this these are all pretty similar in design, you got your battery connectors battery connectors here this is probably for the high voltage one this is probably for the battery, the A battery got a power cord, this be pretty good shape still flexible uh, right here is a plug, so when you plug the the cord in there, it'll stay in. Well, anyway, you plug the cord in there and that switches it over to battery operation. There's a little switch inside there. Because it wants to stay in. I'm not going to force it because I'm not going to run this off batteries anyway. Um, well, let's plug this in and see what we get. There's a little feed through down here so you can feed the, the cord through. It's not very stable. I wonder if it has these little runners on the bottom that it's supposed to rest on. I wonder if they got rounded a little bit because it rocks pretty easy. Right, and this is off. All right, let's just see what happens. Turn the right knob. We have a hum. And not much else. It's kind of sounding a little bit like silver mica to me. That's dirt in the tuning capacitor. Oop, there is something, I think. Yeah, there's something. I have to take care of that crackling though. Anyway, here, maybe it's just a dirty tube socket. We'll check that first. 
Okay, so I've reseated all the tubes. Well, that made a difference. I don't be the lights, let me see. Yep. Sure, a different light. Well, that was easy. Yeah, we're still gonna have to fix that. That woke quite up though. Oh, dollars for stations now. No chance up. Well, since that was so easy, for the fun of it, let's just take this apart a little bit more and see how it's built. Because I wonder whether they just use all disk capacitors, since all the components are up in this little tiny box up here. So I think, just because I'm curious, I'm going to pull this out and see what kind of components and stuff are in there. So I just removed a bolt in either corner here. See if this will lift out now. No. Really no. I think I have to take out. Oh, there it goes. I'll just tight. There's the speaker. That's the antenna. Um, well, that'll be out far enough to get this bottom cover off and see what's in here. But there's just a few nuts all the way around. Something is very warm over here. I'm guessing that's going to be the dropper resistor for the tubes. Yeah, it's been a little bit warm there. Alright, I'll get this bottom cover off. Alright, so I removed four bolts on either side, two on either side in the corners. See if this will pull off now. Okay. Alright, so... Yeah, mostly disc and just three um, wax paper capacitors. I'm not sure if that's a... Feels a little warm, whatever it is. Looks more like a resistor though. Can't really tell. It says 180. I'm gonna assume that's a resistor. Because 180 is not a. That's not really calling value for anything. It's rather warm though. That's rather warm too. Um, I'm gonna assume that's a resistor. It doesn't match the pattern of the other capacitors in here, so I'm just going to assume that's a ceramic potted or a round resistor. If it was a capacitor, he would be going to ground or something. You know what, I bet that's the cathode bias resistor for the output tube. Oh, still, you wouldn't think that this tube would carry that much current. Well, I'm going to take a closer look at that, but I'm pretty sure that's a resistor. Well, since it says 180 on it, and the meter says it's 206 ohms, I'm going to assume that's a 180, supposed to be a 180 ohm resistor. It's funny how they just folded these little capacitors down in there. 
So while I'm in here, I don't really have to, but I may as well just change these two. There's only three of them. May as well change them. And probably also I wanted to take a look just to see what that switch looks like under this cover here. So that's something to help this little rivet out here. Stuck down the side. Okay. Well, I'll get that later. This just opens up, and that would be, oops, that would be our switch. When you stick the plug in here, that'll switch it over to battery power. And it looks like that's all about it. There's the volume control here. Probably spray some cleaner in it while I'm in there. Um, that's about it. I'll spray some cleaner in the tuner too change those caps and electrically that'll be done I'll have to see about fixing those blemishes on the cabinet but it seems pretty easy there so this front panel comes off there's just a bunch of tabs on the back you just have to straighten them out and then it just pretty much pulls off so it's pretty soft metal I just went over and tried to straighten out the dents as much as I could it's not perfect, but it's a little bit better than it was. So, a little bit there, but I'm not sure if it'll come out or not. I think it's a little bit better than it was anyway. So we'll put that back on, and then also in here, in the other side of this uh, volume control cabinet, there's a selenium rectifier in there. So we'll put this back on, and then we'll check the voltage on that and make sure that it's not drawing, uh, dropping excessive voltage, which would be a sign that it's about to fail. And if that checks out okay, I think we'll put this back together then. We just have to check about the either plate rubbing or dirt in the tuning capacitor, and it should be pretty much done then. Alright, so I replaced the uh, selenium rectifier with a diode and resistor. The drop seemed a little high. I think it was dropping about uh, 20 volts or so and it was getting pretty hot after just a few minutes of operation so I figured I may as well replace it. Uh, according to the label in the back this radio draws uh, 15 watts at 117 volts which would calculate to approximately uh, 130 milliamps to run the whole radio and so this is a battery powered set or battery or AC when you're running it on AC, it derives the filament voltage from the B+, through just a big dropper resistor. So I replaced the selenium with a diode and a 100 ohm resistor, which is a little high, but since this radio draws such little current, and um, I wanted to, I didn't want to overdrive the tubes, I wanted to uh, lower, keep the voltage on the tubes a little bit low to prolong their life. So. Time offer, so don't miss out. If you need a small job or chore done, then interference. For four with a pair of Antica, que habla. I heard of that uh, pop at the end of the band too. That was two of the plates in the capacitor rubbing together. So I spent it over a little bit. Now it's fine. And red dot org for detail. With a run score. Head Valley with autism and developmental disabilities. See, where's that music station? It's only a minute ago. Contain no preservatives. They come in three.
Yeah. Well, must be on a commercial. I sit around here somewhere. For more details on this story and other news stories, pick up a copy of today's Reading Eagle. I'm Tyler Werner reporting for The Voice, 8.30 a.m. W.E.E.U. in Reading. It's already Reading. Hello there. Take a little long, but you got what you needed to know. And of course, we're going to take you out to front to your field because it's time now for Iron oh, Peaks anyway. Baseball. Seems pretty. You're listening to Iron Peaks Baseball on the Iron Peaks Radio Network. The Lehigh Valley Iron Peaks are the AAA affiliates. Not sure what station that is. Anyway, it seems pretty good, so that's going to be it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this. Put a look at a 1950s Zenith. This is a B400 wire or something like that. ACDC battery powered radio. Thank you for watching. An interesting problem developed on this. All I have is a hum, but if I hold this down, what is doing that? comes back. Could play with this a little bit. No, it's not going to do it. But you heard the hum, and when you play with this, the hum goes away. Now it came back. Now it went away. So something... I imagine something in here is not making connection properly. Doesn't seem to be that. Not sure if it's these. I don't think it's the tubes. Maybe it is the tubes. Weird though. I go like that, then it goes away. I'm gonna play with this for a little bit. I think there'll be something shorting in here. On the top one, and then it goes away. It comes back. Seems more in here than in the tube. Let's rather take it back apart again. Alright, so I open it up again and moved one of the capacitors down a little bit so it wasn't getting crushed by the top and that seems to have fixed the problem.
Alright, now we're done. So if you enjoyed this little look at a Zenith, I think it's a B400Y, or a AC-DC battery set, and thank you for watching.